What's happening, people, and welcome to our podcast, where we step outside the box and talk about atypical topics from growing minds. I'm Benjamin. And I'm Rainy. And we are your host. Welcome to our show. Let's make some Microphone people. check. Never rewrite your story. Microphone check. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Oh, my God, that scared me. Yes, <laughs> thank you, because I was going to do the same thing. What's I, up, beautiful goldfish? I know. I <laughs> wanted to do it before you did. <laughs> you beat me. I figured if we were talking about YouTube, you'd want the first word. Yes. So I said, hey. <laughs> Today, we're talking about YouTube growth because it is taking off. So and for all you YouTubers who listen to our podcast out there. Wait till you get 300 episodes out and 100 subscribers. <laughs> that's That's, yeah, that's pretty much the point I had to get to, but... 100% worth it, did it, and it felt like no time, you know, compared to what you would expect, years and years, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, <clears throat> I think I'm well on my way to that 1,000. Definitely. Right? And it's growing, and it, it's so stupid. I woke up, I went to bed at 100, woke up 144, went to bed at 180, which is insane, right, for a day. Yeah. Woke up at 218. What? So, super excited, you know? Think about it. You think about it. Income starts rolling in. My YouTube videos are going to get epic. 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 <laughs> yeah, we'll be doing crazy shit. Yeah, like I'm going to buy a bazooka. You know, like it's going to be ridiculous. It's not. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm going to blow something up, man. <laughs> ben had nightmares. <laughs> I did have nightmares. They were gun related. So that's, <laughs> I know. That's why I'm on that. I'm sorry. Ben had nightmares, but he's not letting us bring them down because he woke up to so many different subscribers. Yeah. And you know what's crazy? What? Is the views have slowed down a ton. Really? But the subscribers are growing. It's like... Oops. Bye. <laughs> I don't know. It's like YouTube just finally said, fine, people can sub subscribe to you. You That's know what I want? No, I have no idea, but I bet it has nothing to do with YouTube. <laughs> a well, pair of slippers. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> um... So, anyway, let's tell them a little bit about my YouTube from your perspective. How often am I on this crap? Oh, Ben always has the computer open. Always? I, yeah. At yeah. my desk. I don't carry it. And I, and I, <laughs> Ben's always at his desk. I'm just kidding. Ben cooks dinner. Ben does cook dinner. Yeah. And cleans the house. This is not wax. Um, but he, he's so vulnerable on his YouTube so weird right and the thing is like with youtube you got to have a niche and i genuinely think that ben's niche is being a straight white male who's trying to break all these cycles for his children i keep telling him to do parenting videos and shit interesting straight white male is how you put it uh. <laughs> yes because you, you straight white males are the people who need the most like correction about how to love right. i mean that's what it is it's hey, it's I was nothing just preaching that yesterday you yeah. gotta love yourself before you love anyone else. It's nothing more than <coughs> changing the cycle of hate to a cycle of love. Because if you just do things out of love, like fear. Everything. No. Oh, yeah. For <laughs> love my and fear. No. Yeah, love and fear. That was my dad. <laughs> if you do things out of love purely, then things will go well for you. So, yes. your thing on, on gay people, you know? If you just love people for who they are, just love that they're different. Yeah. You know, love that they're breaking the system well, you know by being different. What's really cool is if they watch our podcast, they watch Is It Queer? Yeah. How long ago was that? It was like one of the first. Exactly. It was months back. And then you listen to like my podcast or my, my live blog where I'm fucking tearing up basically. Yeah. Look at the growth, right? Look at the growth just from there. In that podcast, that early one, we said... You are no. You said you're not gay yet. <laughs> That's what you said. You said you're not gay yet. Yeah. And no, I'm not gay. I'm just on my way to accepting. You know, being more accepting. <laughs> yeah, but it's just like I love queer folk because they're they're themselves and they're not afraid to be. You know, always like not they're all living of them. Their... You can't say that. What? You can't say all of them. You know, I think there's asshole straight people as much as there's asshole gay people yeah but i'm not talking about their personality i'm talking about the fact that they're doing something that nobody else is doing you know they're you know the Stepping system wants us all yeah. yeah the system wants us all to marry 
hetero and then have children like yep. that. Sit down and shut up. Yep. And I think that queer people are breaking the stigma, and I think it's necessary because yeah, I ain't you know. Do it. I'm glad somebody's doing it. I don't think that social media caused it. I think that other people were gay, and social media happened, and that just spread the word and let people. I got a gay uncle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, let's do your gay aunt, because that one's a little bit more probable. Well, she was straight, too, first. I know, but now she's married to a woman. She so. married a dude. Had kids. No, Seven. I know, but your <laughs> uncle's, like, never been, like... With a guy or yeah, a girl, yeah. Exactly, so... Um, <coughs> He's just a lonely fucker. Your aunt is gay, you know? And <coughs> that shows that it's been around for a long time. It's just, you yeah, know... Yeah, because they're, like... In their 60s. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's real talk, man. Like back in uh, back in the 70s, you know? Like, <coughs> that's when gay people really kind of came out, too. <coughs> anyway, let's get off of this. Love you, gay folk. <laughs> <coughs> what we mean is that... Is that the growth <coughs> is undeniable. Yep. The growth is undeniable, and I hope to inspire. Right? I hope to inspire a lot of us, just like I was, a very toxic man. You inspire man. me. Toxic, thank you. Toxic men. Nobody needs a toxic man in their life. No, because... <coughs> There's toxic women, too, but I'm, I'm talking from my perspective, toxic men. <coughs> Half of us don't even want men in our lives. Yeah, that's you true, know? too. Uh -huh. and I hate... No, I love to be one of those people because, because it's generational. It's all generational. And I don't want to hate men, but I definitely have this, not like fear, but knowing that if I'm going to be around a man, they're going to try and take the floor, and that's just gonna, how it's going to be. And I don't like that feeling, right. because I like to take the floor, you know? Yeah, I like to let you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's I like why that we, I don't have to walk in and stick my chest out, you know? That's why we work so well, because in the beginning <coughs> of our relationship, and this is crazy, guys. Yeah, in the, the growth. In the beginning of our relationship, Ben did not want me being a strong woman. I mean, he made it pretty clear. I mean, neither of us were healthy I didn't want you other. to work. Yeah. I wanted you to stay home, take care of these damn children. Yeah. Do the fucking dishes. Neither, neither <laughs> so of us were, like, green flags to each other. I left a marriage to be with him, so that's, like, an immediate red flag right there. But through the growth, Ben has, like, increased in vulnerability and everything, and Working on it. And we kind of just know, dynamically, now, that I... And I'm not going to say... No, I almost said something that was, like, super wrong. That I can take control if I need to or want to. Um, I almost said I wear the pants, and that's not true. <laughs> because... That would beat you right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. I'm beat like, that's lies. not true at all. <laughs> so, just for you folks that think, oh, she wears the pants now, like, uh... Those toxic people at your work when that one guy Oh, was, yeah. No, I can picture it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <coughs> everything between Ben and I <coughs> is so incredibly balanced. Yes. So. Absolutely. He takes control of the room when he needs to, and I do the same. Um, there's a situation that I'm definitely planning myself to take control of the situation coming up <coughs> in a couple of months, but it's something that I know I'm going to hold the floor down on because it'll be like the first time it's happened so right I i'm, a, I'm gonna about. yeah i'm gonna lay the law down and then everything that falls after is fine but yeah uh there's just certain times where you need each other and it's not a, a man and a female thing and i think that's where most people get lost so ben talks about in his youtube toxic masculinity and just why it's a problem, you know? Nobody needs a man to be tough. No. Like, we just like want... Like, you're literally walking around trying to fight people. It's stupid. Yeah, when, when it doesn't need fighting. That's the thing. We're not fucking cavemen. Like carrying a gun to Walmart, you know? Like, yeah. Why, why do I do that? I still do that, but that's for safety. <laughs> Walmart shootouts happen a lot, man. <laughs> and that's an OCD thing. That's an, an OCD anxiety thing. thing yeah, for anxiety, sure. yeah. I remember Ben and I both felt it once. We were... It must have been like a Black Friday or something. We, yeah, went we to turned Walmart. around and went home, right? Something happened. No. I remember getting a feeling deeply. Go ahead. Yeah. Ben and I were standing in line with carts, and there was just a million people around us at a Walmart. And I felt it <coughs> when he felt it. And it wasn't... Something bad never happened. 
but it was like this random sense of intrusive thought that something could happen. And it was like the same time, we both felt it, he might not remember the specific occurrence, but it was just one of those things that we were in checkout line and we just kind of got out of there because it just felt weird. But yeah, so I don't know where that came from. <coughs> oh, like <coughs> OCD and stuff. <coughs> yeah. Uh. And you're carrying your gun and stuff. That's like that. that's the weed. But just so everybody knows that's not a sickness. That's weed. Yeah, yeah, yeet. <laughs> um, I think that it's just crazy because I watch a YouTube channel, and it's just so I think that's crazy too. Weird. <laughs> so it's so weird, right? I'm vulnerable with you, right? Yeah, just the same. Yeah, that's or, or why better. It's yeah. just it's not weird, bad. It's weird. It's different. Um, it's weird, like amazing, like maze. It's like one of those things where I mean, seriously, when we met, you just think back to it, and it's just like I don't think we were good for each other. <laughs> you know, like probably we, not. We knew deep down, right. We would be. There's that twin flame. Yeah, exactly. But in the beginning was definitely the hardest part. Um, because the first year, one, I was pregnant for most of it. And that was also by choice. And that's how you know, like, it was deep down. Like, people thought we were so stupid, but we just kind of had a feeling. I, yeah. It was. It I'm was, a family man. Always have been. So I needed a family. I know that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I felt like we were supposed to be a family. So, I'm a woman willing to do it. <laughs> I know, that's how I felt. I was telling... I was, God, at the point, I was at the point where I was telling guys that... Uh, okay, because, like, you know, I took a break from him for a minute, and it was a big, long minute, you know. I was so tired of being cheated on again. And then I told some guy who was mad when I went back, I was like, well, I want to, like, get married and have a family. <laughs> you know, I just met him. You know, so it was just your, like... Your husband? No, like, this other guy. Another guy? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. I, and he no, was I like, definitely scared a girl or two off. Yeah, no. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. because, like, that's all I wanted. And they're like, I, we met, like, a month ago. Like, you know? Don't you want kids? Yeah, right? <laughs> I needed to know. And then the weird There's thing was... There's crazy people out there, guys, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, we are them. Yeah, and we found each other. That was the point, though. Because when I met Ben, he already had kids. Which made it so much easier to be like, let's have another. I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was super... People would, like, cringe at that. But we loved it. But Jesus, also, know. you start learning about each other's trauma in the first year of a relationship. Oh, yeah. It was, it was a rough one, especially with you being pregnant for most of it, you know? Yeah, and I was emotional as fuck. I mean, that's the, the good thing, though. I the mean, growth. Ben had to have seen me at my worst in <laughs> pregnancy and after pregnancy, you know? It's, uh... <laughs> oh, I just realized why you looked at me like that. Uh, but, yeah, so at the beginning of we pregnancy, burst. we were so... Like, I remember one of our first big fights. You know, I was just barely pregnant. And it's just weird because now it's, like, like, not that way you know it started yeah. off so strong and now strong, yeah like passionate and always like anger etc etc like there was a whole lot of flame there but balanced each other out eventually and mm -hmm. now it's like at this place where like it feels pretty right yeah i can't imagine it being different we, when we met we were both working part-time yeah and then i got fired trying to get and, full time and ben was like just stay home which is weird because he didn't working. make a lot of money and he was like, it's fine, we'll be fine. He's always said that, we'll be fine. So I stayed home and we were fine. But then I started working 50, 60 hour weeks and you were home all the time and I was at work all the time. Now, what job was that? ALS. Okay, I'm thinking before that. Ooh. Yeah, so you were overnight security. Oh, wow. God, I forgot about that chapter of my life. Yeah. <laughs> I was an overnight security guard, that's right. So I quit my job. That shit was traumatizing. I literally quit my job and he started overnight security within the first week. I remember because that was the week I broke my tooth. And I, I remember chewing on a piece of gum. Security. The whole night I stayed up with you that first night, remember? Mm. And you were like, you did not have to stay awake. And I stayed awake the whole night. I chewed on a piece of gum that night on that freshly broken tooth. And it was just horrendous. Mm. But Which is now removed. Yes. <laughs> and I can chew. It's crazy. Yay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So he started making like 16 driving overnight security so i knew we'd be fine he made a lot of money overnight sucks 
if you want to actually have a family and spend time with your family. Yeah. Oh, it's the worst. Don't but work overnight. if you need a job then and now, security is always, overnight. always, <laughs> always, always going to hire you no For matter what. For sure. I've been rehired at companies two, three times, you know, yeah. I mean, that I walked out on. It's true. It's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, so <clears throat> after, after all of that, and then he went to, yeah, work at ALS. <coughs> he got to the point where he was like, uh, COVID. He was basically laid off, and it was like, uh, amazing. Because he said, we'll be fine. Yep. And then we were fine. Because it was crazy. Because it was so long ago, so I can tell it now, that we were waiting on unemployment. And yep. he just told me to chill. I was Pandemic applying for jobs, I was panicking. Yeah, pandemic unemployment. And Which was we different. were waiting, so he had it. It was in his account. I remember when it hit the account. It was so oh, exciting. It was huge. And then we were what waiting. was the number? It was like $6,000. $6,000, guys. Imagine before. not having money for like a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and then six grand. So, Woo! <laughs> uh, we survived on that shit. So then we were just waiting on the card to come in the mail. Yeah. And I was applying for jobs, and then I went to FedEx, and they were like telling me this outrageous shit, and they're like, we're proud to. Uh, have like three million employees. And I'm like, yeah. fuck that. We care about each and every one of you. Yeah, I'm like, fuck you. No, I never went back. It was that Walmart feeling, big corporation, nobody cares. And you know? then, and then his <coughs> card came in the mail. We called it. It had the money on it, and we called it earlier that day. We manifested it. And well, then we started we knew pulling it the cash. Yeah, pulling, pulling, pulling. Because I don't trust crazy. the government. <laughs> And the thing we didn't need to buy, <coughs> this is the crazy part, was, was a, a car. Was it the van? No, no, it was that white, the Ford. No. It's no longer with us, right? No. What? That was a tax return. No. What do we get? We had our car. We didn't need a car. We just did it, period. Oh, wow. Yeah, we just didn't need a car. In our no same old Toyota, huh? Yeah. So. <laughs> She's so a then, trooper, though. Her name's Coraline, by the way. So I knew that we'd be fine. And then he was getting, like, weekly payments. And oh, I was nuts. Plus 500 for the pandemic. Plus the paycheck I was getting because I decided plus, to keep going to work. Plus your paycheck. That's, it was insane. And, you know, it's just weird because we would have had enough. He was getting like 800 a week. And even when you drop down to 500 a week, it That's still stupid. Been yeah, enough. it's still a lot of money. Yeah, it's still way more than we need. But now. I still went to work. Yep. And I worked a pretty large amount. And it was just a little crazy because while I was working, I feel like I really woke up a lot too because we found a sense of independence again, like from each other. And I was away from the house. Yeah. And now it's just like perfect. You used like, to say your drive to work was your favorite. It's yeah. like 40 minutes, you know. Well, that's why I like to walk to work. I'm just waiting till I have the balls to do that again. Um, I just got to do it, you know. Stitching sacks today. All right. <laughs> But yeah, so now it's like perfectly balanced. After that whole rabbit hole that took me like eight minutes to tell, um, <laughs> Ben's YouTube reflects that entire journey. Not the entire, like we didn't start it back then. I'm just saying like... That's interesting. <laughs> it reflects it for me because I watch him and I'm like, oh wow, so weird. You know, that's like, cool. Right yeah. on. Well, that's all I, I could, can only hope that... the reason I started my blog is so my family can watch it and that's see the growth, true. you know? I can only hope that I've grown... You know, it's like, I don't even... Of course you've grown. You've, you've been had growing like, right alongside me. I don't know. You've had, like, obvious generational problems. Like, I was obviously fucked up. <laughs> no, I know, but you were obviously, like, racist and homophobic. That's what I mean. Like, it was obvious. I was so a it's dick also to the world, obvious you know? when you start to heal inside. I hate when you say racist. I wasn't racist. Uh, yeah. My family was racist. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's generational. I was not. Saying you had black friends does not make you not racist, and I can... Hey, the best man at my wedding. I know, that's what I mean. <laughs> I call it all the time, hey, shout out to Ian so, Chivas, that's my boy. generational <laughs> racism. Those are, like, obvious problems, you know? Yeah, no, I know, but no, I didn't What generally. were my obvious problems? You know, I just, like, it's, like, bankless. Like, I have nothing to show for the growth that I've gone. That's how I do Probably not true. No, we just gotta skit that podcast. We gotta, well, we gotta write it all, write it all down. <laughs> no, no, it just makes me think. I don't know. Maybe because I like I did for the how I've awakened to my my show, well, my growth, just, my spiritual growth. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But here's the thing: is I you've really always know. been yourself. Okay, you, you people might have hated that. 
but you've always been yourself. Even when you were like blue collar or whatever they say, uh, you were still generally yourself. You still carried a gun, you know, you still defied police. Yeah, you were always yourself. It was just hard for everyone else to accept. Yeah. So you've accepted yourself and me. I think I've always been myself. I just took my mask off. Like, or I've never been myself. I've always been trying to... People, please. Yeah, like form myself into other people's opinions. Mm -hmm. So maybe just... No, and I know when I met when I met Rainy that she uh, had some issues with... Um, Mom. Mom. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. I guess that's a good area some, to show had some for. Mom I have issues. all my family. Oh, there you go. That's huge. I've yeah, so there you go. Like the the healing family. through her family is incredible. So I'm like healing the generational like, line. She hadn't know. seen her brother in how long? Years when I met you? Yeah. So I was like, let's go to his work. No, Order I some said, food. let's go to his work. Was I was just you? waiting for someone to do it with me. Oh, him. I was like, let's go. Let's do it. So we did, and it was awkward as I hell. I stalked my brother a couple of times. That right there broke it. He said, hi. You know, and I was like, bam, you guys are talking again. Yeah. And then, and then we took off. Me and him became best friends, you know? know. It was like, it's, yeah. It's funny, because when Ben and Riley are together, it's really, it's a we're, thing. We're fucking, if anything, funny, I think. He, he, oh, yeah, no. I can really vibe off of his humor, because he's a funny guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's interesting, and I'm glad to have that perspective. And there's your dad. The way you treat your the world. Your mom. Yeah, yeah, the way you treat the world, you show personal growth. Mm. Mine's like generational growth. Like, let's. It's I, a, it's I'm a definitely the black sheep. Yeah. So I'll put that there right now. I'm 100% the black sheep. Even Carter is doing, like, making bank and doing something incredible that my mom's proud of, which is weird because they haven't talked in forever, you know? So, is it Carter salesman? No, Riley. That's Riley. No, Who Carter. Are we Carter. About? Oh, Carter. Yeah. Okay. He, he, has a, he has a county job. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Uh, admirable, I suppose, to the right person, you know? Yeah, and, uh, you know, Riley's making, you know, he's doing great, and, mm -hmm. um, it's not really how anyone expected. I'm pretty impressed, but my dad's a salesman, so. Success is in the eye of the beholder. Exactly. You know what I mean? But me, who, I was the success story. People thought I was going far, because I would conform to everybody else's expectations, I'm like, I'm definitely going to go to college and be a lawyer. Yeah, right? she married a man in the military. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I really thought... A boy, I should say. <laughs> everyone else thought that was going to be me, and so I did too. And now I realize that I really don't feel like that's how... Yeah, you're I'm gymnastics and a cheer. Man, you're just destined for great things. <laughs> cheer is so much fun. I just... You just had a white collar life. That's, yeah, I'm. You know what I mean. Like, I'm artsy. I mean, I haven't figured out how artsy I am, but I feel like I'm an explosion of art waiting to happen. Right. So, and uh, people who are ADHD and artsy like me don't really have white collar jobs because mm. that gets so boring. Like the reason why my job is so great is because it's not the same thing every day. Right. I always have something new to do. You know, there's always something new to do. And that's what makes it fun. And that's what I need. So it's interesting to watch me grow into myself, which is like just this small town person. <laughs> which is awesome. And yeah, it, it is awesome. Just, it just makes for a humble human. And I'm not like the humblest. I'm pretty. Okay, it'll 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 pretty work. In. It'll work about. in the. Uh, <laughs> like, it'll work in. <laughs> humble humbleness. What is that called? Like, whatever. Being humble is not my thing. But no. I need to. I do need to work on it. That's but I also yeah, feel like that I, is my thing. I feel like I have a lot to brag about, and that's okay. <laughs> See, to everybody, suppose, yeah. to everybody else, they probably don't think of that way. You know, and right. maybe that's why I feel like bragging more. Is because I am genuinely excited about my life. And my I'm, Toyota beat your Toyota. Yeah, literally, though. <laughs> that's how I am. It is a six-cylinder. <laughs> I, I can definitely push that thing as fast as I want it to. <laughs> yeah, and boy. And people don't think that. So, yes, I brag a lot. <coughs> I mean, it's a 98, and it's still going. That's something to well, that's brag about. That's because of us. I mean, <laughs> but it's something to brag we about. We keep it going, man. I'm so, think. yeah, I'm not well, humble. We put work into it. <laughs> I'm not humble with my life because I feel like I deserve to talk about it. When I say we, I mean me. Yes. But yes. Ben's humble. He just talks about his personal growth. 
But it's not material. He could live in a car and he'd be fine. It's true. I don't need materials yeah. at all. It's really interesting because I, I could be a happy hobo. You know what I mean? Yeah. I could be if I didn't have family. I'd be a happy. hobo. I'm definitely <laughs> materialistic. I like things. I like to be surrounded by things that make me feel good because it helps me feel better about myself. No. Obviously, that's an inner thing. But imagine if every I need hobo. a lot of shrooms and I'll feel better. Imagine if there was a hobo that took a daily blog of himself. And talked about the way you feel. Felt. <laughs> feel. <laughs> think about it. At least it. Do you, don't you think you'd be the most viral person in the world? Definitely. We should give homeless people. That's what we should do. If we ever make it big, we, we should. We should interview them. And not just interview them, but give them their own devices and start a channel. No. N most people don't want that. We should interview. If they want. <laughs> homeless people. No, that would be really that'd be cool. Sick. I'm not, I dealt with them that'd for years. I was a security guard, you know, yeah. so I'm, I have you no just, fear. You, know, you read the room. But well, you yeah, you don't walk up to the one acting crazy, you know? <laughs> yeah, you just get videos, and that could be, like, a niche. Or it could be a channel thing, you know, interviews with homeless people. And you could probably figure out so many different things about the world from this. Yeah, because we've been trying to think. Like, I watch a lot of Mr. Beast, and, like, that's the coolest thing in the world, I think, is to give people just everything, yeah. right? Like, not everything. Obviously, you're going to do okay if you're giving away money, but you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the dream, but how cliche. I don't want to just hand people money. Boring, you know? No, so you interview them and you give them a box of food. Nah, come on. Like, easy food to eat. Like, yogurts and apples. What about like fast food, food gift cards? <laughs> no, because that's like... Fast food's gross. bad. Yeah. yeah. Feeding into the system that they escaped. So you feed them things that are easy, like Lunchables and cheese sticks and... That's No, I'm thinking bigger. I'm thinking bigger. Like, buy them a house. Well, I'm talking about when you're broke. I'm when the not. only thing you've got is food stamps. You're talking you about right now? Yeah. You're talking about right now going out and interviewing hobos right yes. now? Yes. We ain't even got no hobos here. <laughs> you gotta go to the nearest city. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta plan a day for it. Plan a day to go interview hobos. Oh, man. They would love it, I guarantee you. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I'm talking about, yes, that sounds really cool. Maybe one day we'll think about it when we're in the city, right? Uh -huh. Across our I, We're we not gonna be in the city. When we see That's a guy, gonna make it great. we're driving, we see a guy. Oh, there you go. And it's like, hey, let me interview this guy. But anyway, I'm talking about real big, like, shake a guy's hand and fucking give him a van. A van that you could live in and or drive. Or we, we should interview, we should interview immigrants. You know what? Whether immigrants? they came over illegally or not. Oh, the borderland? Yeah, in yeah. the borderland community, we should interview people. That's dangerous. Yeah, that's true. It's the only thing. It can be dangerous. And, and I don't mean it in the way you guys think. So I just mean it as in something you don't know. <laughs> so that's where we'll call it because I have to go to work. Yeah, but thank you guys for coming.